Hey everybody, I'm Marshall here from QA1, here to show you a little bit about our new mod series shock. Uh, this shock here we're excited uh, to release. It's the first on the car revalvable shock out there. Um, and that's done via the unique adjustment knobs down at the bottom of the shock. So actually in my hand here, I'm holding all of the compression valving for this particular shock. So you might be asking, what is different about this shock versus all the other ones out there on the market? Well, as time has gone on, Tires have gotten better, cars have gotten better, people have gotten smarter about setting their cars up, therefore your suspension needs to keep up with the increased traction, increased power that you've added, and finally we have a shock that can kind of follow along on your, on your journey with your car, going from an entry level car to more of a semi-professional to maybe an all out drag car. So today we're gonna show you how to install the shocks on a car. Actually behind me here we have a Nova having some uh, shock troubles or issues. So we'll go through and get the mods put on there and, and then show you how to revalve the shock on the car. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Goldie with QA1 Motorsports. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, some issues this gentleman's having with his Drag Race Nova. Uh, like Marshall mentioned earlier, um, we have our new mod series shock that has quick tune technology. It enables the owner or the driver to change the valve in the shock right on the car. The first thing we're going to do is do an install, and then we'll show you how to change the valving right on the car. Uh, first of all, we've already got the car in the lift. As you can see, we've loosened up the fasteners. We've got a supporting jack underneath to support the control arm so it doesn't go too, too far into droop. I'm just going to pull off the shock that's not working for this gentleman, slide it out of here. Again, this is our new Mod Series shock. It has a canister. We do also have a piggyback. We chose to go with the canister in this particular uh, vehicle, just by the way it mounts on the car. Um, that shock was mounted with the body up. I'm going to actually mount it with the body down. Part of the reason I want to do that is because I want to be able to access the knob. So when I'm making adjustments at the track, <clears throat> generally the car is on the ground. It's hard to get up on the top of the wheel to make adjustments, so I'm going to have the adjustment knobs towards the bottom. So I'm just going to slide this shock up in here, and for installation purposes, we don't have the spring on it, so we're just going to show the install. I'm going to stick the shock up in here. Set it in the mounting point that it was at originally. Right, right away I can see an issue. I'm not going to be able to access the knobs at the base of the shock. So if you look over here, the knobs are actually pointing at the back of the spindle. So I wouldn't be able to access them on the car. So what I'm going to do before I actually bolt it in, I'm going to take the shock back out and re-index the base. Like Marshall mentioned, we have indexable bases on all our mod series shocks, so I'm just going to quickly loosen up and grab a tool here, the base. What's nice is when you take the base off the shock, there's no oil, there's no contamination inside the shock body. So I'm just going to do that real quick here, show you how easy it is to do, something you probably do right at the track. And I think if I indexed it way over here, I would be able to right there, that looks good. Screws going pretty easy here. You notice the shock has spherical bearings on both ends. Minimize any kind of binding, gives you a lot of articulation. So I'm just gonna stick it back in there and see if I got it clocked the way I want it so I can easily access the adjustment knobs. And it looks like I have the knobs in a good spot so I can access them pretty easily. So keep in mind, I'm gonna be facing the front of the car when I when I uh, access the knobs and again normally we'd have a spring on here but we're not going to show that for this install. There the shocks installed pretty easy. Um, like I said earlier I want to change the valving on this, car, on this shock because we know when it comes down from wheel stand it comes down so hard that it actually 
just damaged the oil pan. It's got a brand new uh, Moroso pan on here. I think it was about a thousand dollar pan and he doesn't want to have that get damaged again. So what we're going to do is change the valving right in the car. Um, I'm going to grab a valve pack over here. This is it. Compression valve pack. So we have the rebound on the left, the compression on the right. I'm simply reaching here, undo the screws that attach the valve pack to the body of the the base of the shock. There you see the valve packs removed. It's the compression side of the shock. I'm going to set that aside. With my screws in my hand. And you can see there's no oil, there's nothing seeping out of the port there. It's dry in that cavity. The only thing I have to look for is the marking on the side of the valve pack has to match up with the outside of the shock, which is pretty easy to do. Get that lined up in there. So basically that's it. I'm not going to put the other screws in for right now, but once that valve pack's installed, you're ready to make adjustments. And what I did there is I changed the force curve from a standard force curve to our firm force curve. So when this car leaves the starting line, comes down from wheel stand, it'll have more valving on the compression to help control it from not bottoming out the front suspension or the oil pan. Um, basically, quick tune technology lets you do all this work right on the car. Obviously, we could have done on the bench in a couple seconds, but in a matter of four or five minutes, we can revalve the shock right on the car. So now we're ready to go. We go to the track, we can do some testing, see how the car functions, and make some adjustments from there. The other thing that's really cool about this shock, it has low speed bleed in it. When I jack up the compression on a shock like this, what happens when going down track, the front end sits kind of high going down the track because the shock doesn't bleed off at all. So what I'm going to do is open up this hole down here and loosen up the bleed on the compression. So what's going to happen when I'm going down track, got a lot of valving in the shock for compression so it doesn't bottom it out. I want the shock to bleed off and let the front end settle down so I'm not pushing air going down the track. It's got a mile an hour and ET better with bleed in the shock. So that's another feature that we have in the shock that makes this stand alone from other shocks in the market. So again, quick tune technology, easily bolts onto a car. Um, the only thing I didn't show here is bolt, bolting the canister to the frame. That's done with this bracket assembly we have. The canister would simply bolt up to the frame. See, I have it in position there. And I'll just take this bracket assembly and bolt the canister right up to the frame. Simple, simple. And I may adjust this. I'm going to probably set it on the ground and see where the hose comes out, make sure it doesn't interfere with anything, make sure it's uh, not going to get crimped anywhere. So I'll actually bolt the canister onto this frame, a uh, piece of tubing here, if you will, to make sure it doesn't have any interference issues. So basically that's an install and a revalve on a mod series shock simple. Thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully you all learned a little bit watching Dave get the mods uh, installed on the Nova. One final note, the mod series packaging. Got your coilover hardware installed in here as well as your instruction guide and recommended uh, shock settings. There's a link in there to a more advanced guide on our website. But just a reminder, you can find the mod series as well as our entire line at summitracing.com.